Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and uh, today we are diving into the world of Kubernetes on AWS specifically looking into two powerful tools that help you to manage your cluster scaling so we are talking about AWS EKS Cluster Autoscaler and Carpenter so whether you are running a small application or massive Kubernetes microservice architecture the managing resources in, in, in the cloud is very cr crucial. So which uh, solution you, you want to choose, let's find out in this tutorial. So we're going to talk about the agenda for this tutorial. So I'm going to go through the introduction to EKS Cluster Autoscaler. So there are, it's going to be two parts, like we we'll talk about what is EKS Autoscaler and how the EKS Autoscaler help you to scale down and scale up the nodes and we will talk about the pros and cons specifically from a EKS cluster autoscaler then we'll talk about uh, the carpenter so what is carpenter and also the similar way how carpenter help you to scale up and scale down you know the nodes kubernetes nodes so we look into some pictorial representation the diagrams to understand this and then uh, finally we will see you know the comparison between uh, sorry, I missed the pros and cons of Carpenter and then we do the comparison between EKS Autoscaler and Carpenter uh, face to face. So we talk about different criteria and how both of them will uh, you know, uh, show up in what the pros and cons for them. And which one should you choose at the end of this tutorial? I, I'm sure you will get a good understanding of, of both this tutorial and you can decide uh, which one is the best solution for your use case. So first, let's talk about AWS EKS Autoscaler. So if you are using Kubernetes on AWS, you could have probably come across this tool. So the EKS Autoscaler is an open source project developed by Kubernetes and it's fully integrated with AWS. So I don't know if you have uh, used this EKS Autoscaler or uh, Carpenter. So if you don't know Prom, you will be able to understand this in this tutorial. Okay. So let's have a quick overview of, you know, the EKS Autoscaler. So to have a better understanding, we will have a pictorial diagram and to see how the Kubernetes is not scaling up and down in the next slide. Before that, you know, to say that the cluster autoscaler automatically adjusts the size of Kubernetes cluster when there is a need for scheduling the pod. So, but there are, and also if there are not enough resources available. So how, how does it work? Like when you, have your application running and uh, from a kubernetes point of view it tries to create a new parts based on you know the scalability or the recur request from users and if there are no enough resources from your cluster it uh, auto scaler uh, adjust the size of the cluster to schedule the parts based on the uh, needs and um, this how, how it does it scales up by adding nodes so y when you say it scales up, what it means like it scales up by adding more nodes and scales down by removing the underutilized nodes. And this is done basically integrating with AWS auto scaling group. So this is the basic concept like, you know, for EKS auto scaler, you use uh, auto scaling group for scale down and uh, scale up uh, your resources. So let's uh, look at uh, to the diagram and uh, the pictorial representation, how the Kubernetes uh, nodes scaling up and down works so if you see the picture you know you have the kubernetes auto scaler you have a pending ports you have the nodes you have the auto scaling group and you have the new nodes getting created right so let's consider a situation where a pod is in a pending state due to insufficient resources right on the bottom you can see the existing nodes are uh, actually completely utilized but there are two ports already running so there is a new pod in the pending state so what it does the kubernetes autoscaler uh, detects this and takes action because the autoscaler detects that there is a pending pod and which needs an action so what it does it, it communicate with the aws auto scaling group which increases the desired number of instance in the auto scaling group. So for example, uh, currently we have one node, so it will create one more node to accommodate the pending port. So the new auto scaling group provisions a new node. And finally, the new uh, node allows us to scheduling the pending port. So the pending port will be scheduled into the new, port, uh, new uh, node, which is created uh, as part of this auto scaling group. So, you know, it, we can set the limit, like how much the auto scaling group 
can uh, expand like you can set the limit like oh, one two three four you know how many nodes it can create so these things are, can be controlled as part of our state so this is how it works the auto scaling uh, up and down using the kubernetes uh, auto scaling group and the kubernetes auto scaler so this is a pretty simple process but you have you know uh, the interaction within kubernetes auto scaler detects then it has to inform auto scaling group and it has to provision and the nodes uh, has to accommodate so let's talk about what is the pros and cons um, in uh, the auto scaler kubernetes auto eks auto scaler so from eks uh, cluster auto scaler point of view to, in a short crisp information we can say the auto scaler checks periodically for unscheduled ports and decide whether the cluster needs to grow and similarly it removes the nodes which are load utilizer reducing the cost so however it's only work with uh, uh, you know ASCs like auto scaling groups which are which can limit the flexibility so to split into the pros and cons so from a pros perspective we are it's the EKS auto scaler is well integrated with AWS and it's reliable and you have an extensive community support because this has been there for a long period and uh, uh, you know there is a lot of information which you, if you have some issues there are a lot of information on it uh, whereas in the you know, con side uh, negative side you have less flexible and we will talk about why it's less flexible because you cannot use a much uh, lot more um, uh, instance type you cannot use you know uh, spot instance so there are a little complications and it's also slower to scale and it's not the most co cost efficient for scaling uh, i may not i you can you know um, argue on this not most cost efficient because sometimes uh, you know uh, the carpenter also may not be really cost efficient so uh, you know you, you will need to understand what is your actual use case of your system how to optimize your carpenter and auto scaler to you know get your real cost benefit so but in in general if you look at ek's auto scaler it's not more cost efficient compared to you know the carpenter so we will see it in the end of the tutorial how we compare with ek's auto scaler and uh, the carpenter so let's talk about uh, carpenter so now let's move on to the carpenter so unlike the o cluster auto scaler the carpenter is a new open source project created by aws specifically to enhance the scaling capabilities of kubernetes cluster so as you say as you see this is a new solution from aws okay so this is something which you need to keep in mind it's not so new but uh, it's still comparatively new and uh, it has some challenges based on that when we talk about pros and cons and the aim uh, of the carpenter is to simplify the process but not relying solely on auto scaling group so we are not using auto scaling group in carpenter so it's the direct uh, process so it's called the direct apis and it can provision the nodes directly on the fly tailored to the specific requirement of the workload so uh, this is how Carpenter works because it can provision the node directly or not rather than using auto scaling group and it is designed to be faster more flexible more efficient helping you to reduce the cost and improve the performance so these are uh, the reason uh, if you talk about Carpenter why Carpenter it's an open source newer uh, uh, process or newer project created by AWS and it has a uh, different reason why it was created and let's talk about you know how the scaling up and down works with uh, carpenter so if you look into this uh, diagram we are not using auto scaling group so these diagrams are directly from aws okay and carpenter dynamically launches the right computer resource in response to the changing application node uh, application load or the request so if you see like you have a set of pending kubernetes ports uh, in the diagram and uh, from the pending kubernetes you schedule some of your pods to the existing capacity right it's based on uh, how much the nodes are running uh, it schedules some of the pods and you have some of unscheduled pods so what happens is carpenter uh, identify uh, these unscheduled pods and it, it creates just in time capacity like these resources are dynamically provisioned to allocate this unscheduled pod so what happens is carpenter automatically allocates this uh, capacity uh, allowing them to be scheduled efficiently and also carpenter 
and also have the capacity to rearrange you know the nodes based on the size you can have a smaller uh, nodes based on your capacity requirement it can create small nodes bigger nodes and you know it can also allocate the pods into a consolidated uh, workload if you have you know free usage so you can cordon the pods and it can move it you know from one node to other node with you know to effectively utilize your resource so you can get to know more about this reading through documentation of Carpenter, but in, gen in general case, that's the benefit of uh, Carpenter. So let's talk about the pros and cons of Carpenter. So in, in the short term, uh, crisps, crisp information, Carpenter dynamically launches just the right compute resources in response to changing application load. And it does this by observing the real time pod requirements. It's capable to provision different types of instances including the spot instance which can be more cost efficient so that's uh, in general uh, a key message from carpenter so if you split into pros and cons so pros you know the carpenter is highly flexible because we say you can have different type of instance type you know it, it can adapt to you know, changing application load very quickly and it can easily quick to scale and as I mentioned, the support wide range of instant time. It can also support ARM instance. It can support spot instance or, or you know, in uh, auto scaler also, but it's need more configuration. And uh, from a cons perspective, this is where I, I told about, you know, the Carpenter is relatively new. So this can be a cons, you know, it's going to be a negative side because it's relatively new. And we, we have a fewer community resources because of that, because it's not that heavily uh, popular uh, it's popular but it's not heavily utilized and we don't have a lot of information resources on available on the market to uh, use it and it's more complex uh, compared to auto scale you know EKS auto scaler and this need a steeper learning curve because it's a new uh, technology or new um, in project available in uh, market so if you are not into that it may take some time for you to learn and adapt and uh, optimize your usage for the carpenter to get the efficient result so let's now talk about the um, how we can compare okay so how do we these two stack up against to each other so let's break it down uh, from EK's autoscaler and carpenter into four uh, different categories. So I've split it into flexibility, speed of scaling, cost of efficiency, complexity, and ease of use. So we, let's compare these two uh, components like Autoscaler and Carpenter between these four uh, categories. Let's start with flexibility. So when it comes to the terms of flexibility, Carpenter clearly takes the lead. And uh, EK's Autoscaler is tied to Autoscaling Group, which can limit the types of instant you can use so that's uh, really a negative from a uh, EK's auto scaler side and the carpenter is directly interacting with the EC2 API giving you the ability to choose from wider variety of instances including the uh, sports instance so from a flexibility point of view definitely carpenter takes the lead uh, from a speed of scaling uh, when it comes to speed of scaling carpenter again has the upper hand uh, because Carpenter is designed to scale up and down faster by directly provisioning the nodes based on the current demand. So uh, this is one of the reasons this Carpenter's project is there because it uh, helps to scale up and scale down faster, whereas EK's auto scaler might be slower as it's wait for new instance to be launched from a auto scaling group because EK's auto scaler use auto scaling group, whereas Carpenter doesn't use the auto scaling group. It directly interact with uh, APIs. Now, from a cost efficiency point of view, Carpenter can help you to optimize the cost by leveraging spot instance and wide range of instance type. Uh, EKS Autoscaler doesn't natively support the spot instance uh, without additional configuration, and it's also less instance type, potentially leading your higher cost. But this is a little bit uh, complex statement because uh, for me, you know, it depends upon how much you have put the in learning in place because sometimes you know just moving from EK's auto scaler to carpenter is not going to improve any of your cost because you have to identify what kind of usage is coming up from your applications what kind of instance type what kind of configuration you need to put in carpenter and 
it's not that straightforward because I've seen, you know, moving from EK's autoscaler to Carpent that doesn't act directly get into any straightforward cost benefit it could be the same as what you see but i think you can have more instance type you can have you know more um, uh, uh, different type of like arm different kind of instant configurations um, also you need to consider you know when you have more instance types you also need to see it can add up more host count because if you if you see like smaller instance you the carpenter will create small nodes and it will feed up into it so for example if you're having uh, some challenges on like you have to control the node numbers then you know you have to control what kind of instant types you have to use in the EKS autoscaler and carpenter now well, let's talk about the complexity and ease of use so uh, from an EKS autoscaler uh, might be the better option for those who are starting out because it's easier to set up and integrate directly with AWS services. Whereas Carpenter, uh, while more powerful, it may require more effort and to configure and optimize. By, why? Because as I mentioned, Carpenter is very new into market and you know it does not it, it may not have the complete community information which you can help you to on different scenarios where you need support. But EK's autoscaler has been there and you know it's like uh, direct integrations and you have more resources and it's a straightforward setup for those who are getting started with this configurations. But it also is, is good that you know where then you set up EK's autoscaler you can directly get into Carpenter and you can uh, you know, improve your situation step by step uh, as you need. So this is the uh, com comparison. Uh, from a friend to a friend to friend comparison between four categories of EKS autoscaler and Carpenter. So, which one should you choose? So, I, I can give you two uh, suggestions from my end, but anyhow, ultimately the decision is yours based on your architecture and your company or your personal usage. So if you're looking for a simple, well-supported, uh, integrate seamlessly with AWS, you don't need a flexibility to diverse instant type, EKS Autoscaler is a solid chance. So just, just go for this because, you know, if you're looking for a simpler solution and don't have a diverse instant type, just go for EKS Autoscaler. Whereas, you know, if you're looking for dynamic scaling, quick response time, want to leverage the cost saving of spot instance or different instant type, Carpenter could be a game changer for your workload. Um, or these are the two categories I can uh, put into. Where um, how do you want to choose? It ultimately comes down, you know, your specific use case. So both tools are powerful on their own way. So choose the best one fits for you, since Carpenter is the new one in the market. And if you want more flexibility and more scalability, more cost reduction, I would say go for Carpenter. But if you want more stable, more reliable, old, um, easy to set up configuration, go for um, EKS Autoscaler. So that's all uh, for today. Um, and, and that's for today's comparison. And if you find this video helpful, don't forget to give thumbs up and hit the subscribe button for more DevOps content. Also, let us know your uh, comments uh, about the tool you prefer and if you have any questions in, your, in the comment sections. And thanks for watching and uh, see you in the next video.